Hey everybody, Jacob back here with you for another edition of the Improviser's Guide to the Cello. You know, I remember when I was about 10 years old hearing Coltrane solo over a moment's notice for the first time. And I remember over the B-flat pedal he played a really cool lick that had a pretty big influence on me at the time. Uh, Coltrane played this. What I didn't know is that the concept behind that lick became extremely influential, not just in the jazz of Coltrane's era, but up to this very day. Now, if you're watching this, you've probably been through the Improviser's Guide Diminished Scale Super Course, uh, which is a behemoth and goes over different approaches uh, with the diminished scale as it relates to different eras of jazz and shows you how to apply the diminished scale and those concepts to the cello fingerboard in a way that's effortless uh, and without thought. So if you haven't checked that out, go do that right now uh, and then come back to this video. But I realized in talking about those different approaches that I didn't specifically talk about this concept. Um, so what I want to do to make up for it is over the next couple of weeks, I'm going to post every single week <laughs> you guys are going to hold me accountable to this. I'm going to post every single week um, a different lick. This week we'll start with, with, with this idea, but I'm going to post a different lick. Uh, I've got a Michael Brecker one and a Mulgrew Miller one and a Kenny Kirkland one um, that uses this same sound pattern concept uh, in a slightly different way. But for today, let's just talk about um, uh, the basic fundamental idea, because this is one of those cliches that every jazz musician kind of needs to know now, uh, and yet it's extremely musical, right? It doesn't sound, uh, the problem with any of these symmetrical scales, like the diminished or the augmented scale, is that it's very easy to just sound like you're kind of just playing the scale, uh, and this one uh, has a lot of hipness and freshness to it, uh, so uh, great, great concept uh, to focus on in your diminished lick playing, and it's also amazing for your chops. Um, so let's let's break this down. Uh, basically what we have is, is we have uh, this. Mm. Right? Or uh, if we want to move that lick over uh, by uh, two sixteenth notes, we have this. That makes it a little bit easier to kind of see in the hand. Now, what's going on is, is we're basically focusing on melodic cells here. So imagine that uh, we have a diminished chord. You can think of this particular one as uh, a G, a B flat, uh, a C sharp, or an E diminished chord. It doesn't really matter. It's the same notes, uh, same fingering, same everything. And what we're doing is, is we're thinking of each note of the diminished chord and the note a whole step below it. So E and the whole step below, C sharp and the whole, a whole step below, B flat and the whole step below, and G and the whole step below, and then we wind up back on E again, uh, as little cells unto themselves. So each note, each, all four notes of that arpeggio, the let's call it the E diminished arpeggio for now, with uh, the note a whole step below, and because it's a symmetrical scale, that all works out. And so it really, all of these licks kind of really emphasize that sort of diminished sound. We're taking those two note cells and manipulating them in different ways. This particular lick um, takes that, that cell, again, the note of the diminished chord, a note of the diminished chord and the note a whole step below it, uh, and basically goes uh, skips down, in other words, it skips over one of the cells and then steps up to that cell and skips down and steps up, kind of a broken thirds pattern going down, uh, but thinking of uh, the note from the diminished scale and the note below it as, uh, as a unit unto itself. So we've got, it, let's just starting on E, and then the note right below it, that's our first cell, and we're going to skip C sharp, C sharp B and just go to B flat, A flat. So, and so we skipped down, we skipped over and went right to, and then we're going to step back up to the note that we just, to the cell that we just jumped over, which in this case is C sharp B. 
and then the pattern repeats. We're going to jump down and then step back up, etc., etc. Now, just like all things diminished, um, a lot of the time before you discovered the amazing concepts of the Rosetta system and full range and all the cool stuff that we learned uh, uh, in IGC, you would probably take a lick in Pratt like this, uh, and you would practice it like that and like that alone, right? That pattern. But just like practicing the E diminished scale uh, in where you're just moving a hand shape around, that's all well and good. There's nothing wrong with that, but it doesn't really lend itself uh, to resequencing the notes, and most importantly, it doesn't lend itself to uh, our harmonic concept of the fingerboard. What I mean by that is, is that if we're shifting around that much uh, and we're stuck having to shift because that's the only way we understand the notes and can play them, uh, as opposed to learning them all in position, um, what happens is, is that often if we're playing like a 2-5-1 or we're playing uh, within a harmonic context and all of a sudden we want to use that scale, we often lose our groove, lose our fingering, we're, we're having to basically overshift all the time. So instead of practicing this way, uh, let's use our, uh, let's use our 2 plus 4 plus 1 system. Uh, which now we know how to do and practice it this way. Sorry, I left out the end there, so we want to go all the way down to the E. Let's try that again. There we go, much better. Um, and you notice in that case, there's no actual shifting happening, right? I'm using my extend and hop, but I'm staying within uh, this area here, basically in uh, th upper third position type area. Um, and that allows me uh, to have much smoother voice leading and also then to be able to relate this uh, to uh, other harmonic formula because I'm not shifting around. Okay, so to put this in a musical context, let's imagine that this E diminished scale I'm using is for an E a dominant seven flat nine chord, uh, and let's resolve it to an A minor six. In other words, I'm going five to one. It doesn't get any simpler than that. And as I play, I'm going to stay in the same position so that I can be really efficient and feel that E, which in this case is gonna be on my fourth finger, resolving to the A, my fourth finger of fifth below. Okay. <laughs> Pretty cool. Now let's try the same idea, but we'll get in and out of the uh, E uh, pattern. In other words, we'll start on that B half diminished seven chord and we'll improvise into the pattern and we'll improvise getting out of it, staying in position the whole time. That's really the key for this exercise, okay? Let's try. <laughs> So as you could hear and hopefully see in terms of the efficiency of the hands, um, I'm not shifting a lot, right? And it, in my head, I'm really aware of basically my A minor frame the whole time, right? That's my root or uh, as I'm moving around. And so it's very, very easy for me to play uh, with smoother, more efficient voice leading and not freak out and have to overshift uh, because I'm the slave to a pattern. Uh, so I played my E diminished and then when I got to the A, uh, I was totally ready with that A melodic uh, minor scale. Um, in that case, I think I actually played a triad pair. So uh, uh, a C augmented, right? <laughs> Uh, to uh, D, which is the third and the fourth scale degree uh, of a melodic minor. Triad pairs, super common. 
um, but that's a concept uh, for another time. The point is, is that there's very few cellos on earth, like on one hand, uh, that have the control uh, to be able uh, to really shred scales like this. And now that you've been going through IGC, um, you're going to be one of the crop of a whole new breed of cellists that's actually finally free on the instrument instead of, you know, relying on a few gimmicks and, you know, knowing how to chop and things like that. Uh, uh, they can really do expressive things uh, because you understand the harmony uh, and harmonic aspects uh, of the fingerboard in a way that really works. So mess with that this week. Uh, next week, I'm going to show you, I think we'll do Michael Brecker next week. So I'll show you how Michael Brecker takes this same concept um, and just alters it a little bit uh, to create his own uh, signature uh, lick. So hope you had fun with that, mess with it, as I said, and I will see you next week.